Thank you for joining us today. My name is Mark Olson. I'm one of the founders and the president of Integra. And today we're going to talk about using Axial MFL to detect, characterize, and size in whole metal loss. As we're all aware, magnetic flux leakage technology has been used in inline pipeline inspection applications for more than 50 years. However, previous generation MFL systems were not considered effective for assessing pinholes. Typical probabilities of detection and probabilities of identification were equal to maybe, with accuracy being merely detectable. This presentation discusses the past four to five years experience with Integra's ultra high resolution axial MFL system for assessing true pinholes. Naturally, this journey starts at the pull test facility in our technology center in Canada, where we discover and quantify what is possible. Then we were able to consider hundreds of data points provided to us from the excavation activities of our customers worldwide. As it turns out, the biggest challenge in quantifying the pinhole specification was verifying the quality of the in-the-ditch NDE results. This paper includes a couple representative examples comparing field excavation results to ILI data and discusses the various in-the-ditch NDE techniques. But first, let's do a quick review of MFL theory as it relates to the assessment of pinholes. Magnets placed with opposing poles on either end of an iron backing bar and connected to a piece of steel creates a magnetic circuit. This circuit causes magnetism to flow in the piece of steel from one magnetic pole to the other. This flow is called magnetic flux. The magnetic flux will always take the path of least resistance with some of the flux flowing in the piece of steel, some flowing outside the far surface, and some flowing inside the near surface. The flux that flows outside of the piece of steel is called the flux leakage. In the presence of metal loss, for example corrosion, the cross-sectional area of the steel is reduced, causing more flux to leak. By comparing the increased leakage to the background values, the volume of missing metal can be estimated. As it relates to pinhole assessment, it's important to remember two things. Number one, path of least resistance. Flux will always take path of least resistance and will tend to flow around narrow defects rather than leaking out of the steel material. Number two, magnetic flux leakage assessment involves a volumetric measurement. There must be a sufficient volume of missing metal to distinguish leakage from the background. Integra's sensing matrix was designed in such a way that a pinhole feature as small as 3 mm by 3 mm and only 10% deep should not pass undetected. Presented here is Integra's API 1163 qualified pinhole specification. Pull testing demonstrated that the ILI system could reliably, with 100% POD, detect and size 3 mm by 3 mm pinholes that are only 10% deep internally and 20% deep externally. Qualified using not only large-scale pull tests, but also several hundred data points from actual field excavation activity, this pinhole spec is more conservative. The specification shown is based on the ILI system operating at its maximum wall thickness and maximum tool speed capability. As can be seen in the Unity plot, one could certainly expect significantly improved performance in smaller wall thicknesses and or at slower speeds. The outlier anomalies in this unity plot came from a high-speed gas rub. There were three major challenges to qualifying the pinhole specification based on field excavations. First, it is fairly rare for an operator to specifically target individual pinhole anomalies for investigation. Therefore, we receive fewer pinhole data points. For example, a 60% deep pinhole by itself doesn't fail any remaining pressure or burst pressure criteria. So most pinhole data we received from field excavation activity was coincidental to other investigations and or involved significant clustering. Secondly, our customers are extremely busy managing a large workload. It is challenging for them to also have enough excess bandwidth to provide us with high quality feedback that we desire. Finally, it is difficult for us to easily qualify the quality of the feedback that we receive.
a thorough, high-resolution, in-the-dish, non-destructive examination of the internal corrosion is expensive and time-consuming. Many operators choose to forgo the extra expense, satisfied with some quick readings from a Pencil Pro UT device. As can be seen in the side-by-side -side comparison, the correlation is visually stunning. The PODs and POIs are quite high. I'm going to just leave this slide here for a few more moments. As can be seen in the Unity plot, the IOI system performed well within specification even though the pipeline was a higher speed gas line. The Unity plot also supports what we've been saying about the volumetric nature of MFL techniques. This next Unity plot shows the results of another project where the operator cut out the pipe and split it open for direct measurement of the actual pinholes. The pipeline was 6 inches in diameter and consisted primarily of 188 inch wall thickness. It was a liquid line operating at less than 2 meters per second. As you can see, the system performed very well, resulting in a plus or minus 10% sizing accuracy. So how do we overcome this common situation where the limitations of in-the-ditch NDE techniques seem to contradict the actual MFL assessment of internal pinholes? In the 16-inch gas example above, the deepest pit was directly measured to be 57% deep, but the deepest anomaly measured in the ditch with a pencil probe from outside the pipe was only 14% deep. ILA systems assess the pipeline from the inside with a much higher data density slash resolution, whereas in the ditch techniques attempt to locate and measure internal defects from the outside using a lower density of discrete point measurements. Well, back at the tech center, Integra partnered with the local branch of a major international NDE service provider. We cut a section out of 8-inch pipe, manufactured a range of pinhole defects, and then tack welded the section of pipe back in place. Integra performed a pull test on the section. Then an experienced and industry-recognized Level 3 NDE tech performed automated UT, phased array UT, and digital radiography techniques on the test section. The test section consisted of 8-inch diameter, quarter-inch wall thickness pipe. The defect set included 3 millimeter, 4.5 millimeter, and 6 millimeter round pinholes that were 20% deep and 60% deep, and that were round-bottomed or conical shaped. Microbially induced corrosion and AC induced corrosion are typical examples of round bottom pinholes. Conical shaped defects tend to be material or manufacturing in nature, such as slivers, scabs, earth wall anomalies, and seamweld defects. Conical shaped anomalies contain less volume of metal loss and they tend to be undercalled by MFL and tend to scatter more UT poles when compared with round bottom anomalies. The ultra-high resolution axial MFL tool was pulled four times at speeds ranging from half a meter a second to three meters a second. The MFL system detected 12 out of the 12 defects. 11 of 12 defects were found to be within sizing tolerance. As expected, the conical shaped pinholes were undersized. The automated UT the automated UT system made three passes of the test section. Only six of the 12 defects were detected. Only the larger, shallower defects were accurately sized. AUT was challenged by the lack of remaining wall thickness in the deepest pits and by the conical shape. Phase Array UT system performed much better than AUT. Nine of 12 defects were detected, including all of the round bottom defects and the shallow conical shaped defects. Sizing accuracy was generally observed to be good. The phase array UT system was challenged by the lack of remaining wall thickness in the deep conical shaped pits. The challenge for using in the ditch techniques for internal pinholes is precisely locating the defects. Digital radiography can greatly reduce that variable for both gas and liquid lines. 
In addition to locating the anomalies, it was observed that for what was effectively a gas line test, the digital radiography could be used to measure the surface dimensions of the defects and also the relative depths. In this image, focus was on the conical shaped defects located at 12 o'clock. You can also see round bottom defects at 6 o'clock, but they are out of focus and on the opposite side of the pipe. Following the conclusion of the laboratory study comparing MFL and in the ditch techniques, a couple of additional observations were made. First of all, for the AUT system, a smaller transducer may have helped improve the detection and accuracy results. Nonetheless, AUT would have still likely been outperformed by the phased array UT system. As it relates to digital radiography, obviously it would be much more challenging application for liquid lines. We would not be able to use digital radiography for sizing of internal pinholes but it would still add the value of precisely locating the anomalies for use in conjunction with other in-the-ditch techniques. In conclusion, it was demonstrated that results from an API 1163 qualified axial ultra-high resolution MFL inline inspection system is reliable. Second, it was shown that detection and sizing of internal pinholes from inside the pipe with an ILI system that generates a high density of data, outperforms traditional in the ditch NDE techniques, which try to measure internal pinholes from outside the pipe with discrete points. It was also shown that it was unlikely for an ultra high resolution MFL inline inspection system to grossly overcall pinhole metal loss due to the volumetric metal loss requirements of MFL technology. Digital radiography was shown to be effective at locating target anomalies, and that led us to the final conclusion that pipeline operators should consider using multiple complementary NDE techniques to assess internal pinholes. Well, this concludes my presentation. Hopefully we have time left for questions. I can't thank you enough for uh, taking the time to participate in this. Thank thanks a lot.